In this video of the JavaScript series, we'll take a look at a server-side form handler. I'll return to client-side JavaScript code later, but for now, I just want to make sure everything is in context. I've already created a database in Access into which I'm going to put the form data that I collect. It's a really simple database. I've called it customers.accdb. I have a single table in here called tuple customers. And you can see there's a column in this table that corresponds to each of the fields on my HTML form. At the moment, there are no data in the table. We'll take another look at it later. I'm using the Microsoft Visual Studio integrated development environment with ASP.NET installed. You can download all of these tools for free. And I'm going to create a new project. I want an ASP.NET web application and I'm using the programming language Visual Basic. Now there are several different models which you can use to build a web application, but I'm going to keep mine really simple. I'll start with an empty project template. And I'm going to add in my HTML page and a form handler which I've already written. You should recognise this page from my previous video. And here's my form handler, which I'll talk you through in a moment. A form handler needs to be hosted on a web server in order for it to work. I could upload it to a hosting service that I'm paying for, or I could install some software on my computer to turn it into a web server, such as Microsoft Internet Information Server, IIS, or Apache if I want to use open source software. In fact, there are dozens of alternatives. But that's another story. One of the really nice things about using Visual Studio, however, is that it comes with IIS Express, a cut-down version of IIS which I can use to test my server-side code, as you'll see in a moment. And there are lots of other programming languages you could use to write your server-side code. C Sharp, Perl, PHP, Python, Ruby, Java, and even JavaScript. To run JavaScript anywhere other than inside a browser, you would need to install a standalone JavaScript runtime environment, such as Node.js. But that too is another story. Let's quickly double check my form attributes. I'm using the method post, and the action is specified as my active server page. I haven't specified a full URL because the web page and its handler are in the same place. So what does the form handler do? At the top, I've specified the language I'm using, Visual Basic. I've also imported a few namespaces. The first two namespaces are allowing me to send email, and the third namespace here allows me to connect to the database. And what follows is my response page. Notice the familiar HTML tags the head tag with a title tag inside it, and then of course the body. A bit of simple text to start with, your registration is confirmed, and here I'm collecting data from the form that was posted into a set of variables which I've declared. Notice how I'm using request.form. If the data was transmitted using the get method rather than the post method, I'd be using request.query string. With all of the data gathered up into variables, I'm now writing it onto the page. And to do this, I'm using response.write. Again, notice inside the brackets, this is just a bit of standard HTML, but I'm concatenating the contents of those variables into it. Now things get a little bit more interesting. I'm saving the data into my Access database. To do this, I'm declaring a connection object and this is my connection string. This connection string is for the version of Access that I'm using. But if you're using a different type of database, you just need to find the right connection string. Then everything else is pretty much the same. I open up the connection. 
I'm creating a command object, which I'm going to use to fire an SQL insert statement at my database, set the command to use the connection I've opened, and here's the command text, insert into. This is my SQL statement, but what I want you to notice is that the values clause is using the contents of those variables. Execute non-query sends the data to the database, and then I close the connection. The final thing I'm doing with the data I've collected is to send an email. Let's just uncomment this code to see what it looks like. I should point out that this is not my real email address, but this is the address that I'm sending it from. I'm also specifying an alias so that it looks like it's come from Bill Gates. This is the email address which I'm sending to, and thinking about it, I should probably put the email which is in the variable in here instead. That's the subject of the email, and then inside the body of the email, a friendly personalised message. Thank you for your data. These few lines of code are specifying the email system which I'm going to use to send the email. If you haven't got your own mail server, then you might have to take this route if you want to do some experimenting. For example, if you want to use Gmail to do this for you, then you'll need to put in your authentication information here. You'd have to put in your real Gmail address and you'd have to put in your Gmail password. You might also have to take a look at your Gmail settings to make sure that it doesn't block emails coming from programs like this. Now you'll have to trust me on this. It does work. I've tested it but I'm not going to show it to you now. So let's give it a try. Here's my HTML page, and I'm going to run it up using IIS Express. Submit the form, and there's my client-side validation kicking in. And there's the response. And let's take a quick look inside my Access database. A new record has been written to the table. So there you have it. If you want to play around with some server-side programming, I recommend that you install something like Visual Studio. Next time, I'll return to client-side validation using JavaScript.